So I was going to do this whole video series on materials and how to render materials and I was really not happy with it. So I'm, I'm going to do it again and hopefully I don't fuck it up. Um, because it's kind of complicated, but it's kind of very simple, basically. So what this video is not going to be, we're not going to be talking about texture. So what is texture? Texture is basically, you know, when you go look for like how to render a uh, wood or something like this, and you get like a video that shows you, oh, you draw wood and then you add like, oh, grains to it, right? This is how you add grains to it, right? This is really not what this video is about. This is more about how to actually render the kind of underlying material of a certain object. Now, uh, I kind of was brainstorming how to explain this to people. And I really, I think this is really the it. There is really not nothing. This is it. Okay. There is, this is it. There is really only rough, smooth objects. You have opaque, transparent. So this is either or. It's either opaque, it's or it's transparent. These kind of knock each other out. You know, they're they're not they're not they're mutually exclusive. And then you have a uh, specular and diffuse. And this is it. This is. Any, anything that an object can be in this world can be either rough or smooth, opaque or transparent, specular or diffuse. So what is rough and smooth? This is interesting. So rough, so a smooth object is like this, very flat. There's not a lot of um, texture to it, I guess you could say. Well, a rough object looks something like this. And then you, again, you have variations. You have objects that are like kind of like this, right? They're not really smooth, but they're not really rough, you know, so on and so forth, right? So uh, what's the difference between these two objects when it comes to how they interact with light? Basically, when light hits a smooth object, it, if you had any uh, class physics, uh, physics, physics classes in college or in high school, uh, you should probably know about refraction, stuff like this, but basically means that light kind of uh, bounces off of it and leaves some energy in the object and you know whatever leaves the other light just kind of flies away from it doesn't doesn't really it's not really important for this but on a smooth surface it does this very easily on a rough surface a light can kind of hit here and maybe reflect fine but it might hit somewhere here and then reflect into this and then you know bounce back in, in a kind of a weird angle then it might kind of you know might come from this direction again reflect into like another weird angle just kind of it just kind of disperses itself in weird angles, right? On a spherical object that's very smooth, light kind of bounces off of it in very predictable patterns, right? That's basically what roughness and smoothness is. So what's the kind of effect of this? We'll talk about this more when we get to kind of the rendering, but basically smooth objects have very clean, sh uh, very clean distinctions between shadows and lights, while rough objects have very... Um, diffuse i guess what you would call it kind of very rough transitions between light and shadow sometimes they kind of blend with each other we'll talk more about this later so let's let's see some examples right let's see some examples so here we have a rough kind of plastic ball and here we have like some these smooth kind of plastic balls right and i want you to notice the difference now uh we're going to talk more about this in a second but look at how, you know, you have a light shape probably from like a light source hitting it, right? There is a kind of a spot of the highlight and even here. But look at how like the shadow area, which is kind of like here. I shall choose a color that's uh, a bit brighter so you can kind of see it. Look at how the shadow area, which is kind of here, you can't kind of really see it, right? It's kind of difficult to see. It kind of blends very much into the kind of mid-tone, I guess. And how these highlights are kind of very diffuse. Look at how, how diffuse these edges are, right? There is no like defined sharp edge on these uh, lights. Well, if you compare these to these like, um, I don't know what the fuck, these are plastic balls, very like, uh, uh, you know, very smooth plastic balls. Look at how defined everything is. You can see within the reflection, the kind of surface of the ceiling uh, where this, uh, this picture was taken. You can see the railing here. You can even see some kind of wall here in the background, right? And there is a, sh now, there is a shadow shape here. It's right here on the edges. 
it's very light it's very slight there is a bit of a value change as you kind of go away from this kind of light source right but it's very slight uh it probably you can best see it probably in this red one you can see it right here there is a bit of a value change right here but pretty much the whole object kind of it's so smooth that it reflects the environment while rough objects like this one kind of don't do this they're kind of very diffuse Okay, so that's like rough objects. Now I'm gonna skip opaque objects for now and go to specular and diffuse, because I already used this word a couple times during this video, and uh, this might confuse some people. So what is specular? Now specular basically is, um, it's not the same as smooth, but it's very similar. You could even say that rough, roughness and smoothness and specularness are kind of on the same axis. But I like separating them because um, in a lot of 3D software, uh, metallics is kind of a separate slider. For example, like in Blender, metallics is a separate slider from rough smoothness, although they're kind of very similar. Specularity basically is how well does your object reflect the environment. So a very specular object is very good at like, reflecting light away from it for example like glass is the perfect example of it like a mirror right you know for example a lot of people don't know that mirrors are actually green like actual the color of mirrors is like either some kind of very teal blue or uh green but these objects are so specular window is so specular that it basically reflects any kind of light it hits right anything that hits it is basically being reflected Okay, so uh, I found the picture to prove that mirrors are green. Uh, I was afraid I, I made a mistake, but I didn't. I was actually correct. So as you can see, as you kind of as this kind of mirror reflects in of itself and does these kind of zigzag reflections, you can see slowly how the tint of the window here in the background is getting greener and greener and greener. So that's something. Here you go. That, so I was right. Uh, I, I was afraid maybe I was wrong, but I was right. Okay, so let's talk about. Um, Let's talk about uh, actual specular objects right now. Oops. Let's talk about specular objects right now. So here I have two examples of why I separate specular objects separately from roughness. Because effectively, they, they are separate in some instances. And for example, with br uh, brushed metals, uh, a perf perfect example of this is like this plane right here. Oops. This plane of, I don't know, aluminum, steel, who knows. Now, this metal is reflecting its environment extremely well. You can see like a light source probably from a window. You can see some kind of bluish light from like kind of a, a gas lamp in the whatever the, the, the warehouse this is found. You can even see probably a reflection of someone's clothes or whatever this is, right? Or, or even like maybe a wall here. I don't know what this is. I mean, it, but it's reflecting the environment extremely well. Maybe it's difficult to define what these things are, but this is all things found in the environment. Compare this to this smooth, I don't know, sanded, uh, you know, very smooth aluminium that basically perfectly reflects everything, right? So, although this one is rough, these two objects are equally as specular. You see? The difference is this one is just smooth. Much smoother than this one. Now, compared to, again, windows that we had right here, which are a lot more uh, windows like here, which are like a lot more specular. They basically, you know, I don't know how much, this is almost a mirror finish, but a mirror, mirrors are like, I don't know, 99.999% specular, right? It takes a lot for them to like start tint the image that you're reflecting. Now compare this to our plastic balls that we had right here, uh, which are definitely specular, right? But not as much as this, like even this metal, um, you know, this metal has like a color. It's not the, co it's not white. It's not silver. This is just because we think it is because it affects the environment so well. We think it's like a silvery whitish color. Like metal just has the color of the environment that it's in. Metal isn't gray. Metal is whatever color it needs to be. But this plastic ball is definitely blue, uh, teal. This plastic ball is definitely yellow. This plastic ball is definitely red. Now it just so happens that it also reflects a bit of the environment. But that environment also much more reddish. It's much more influenced by the value of the ball. While the metal and metals and mirrors that we've shown basically just take on the color of the environment. They're, they're so, again, they're so specular 
that they just take on whatever color they need to be. So what I'm doing right now is basically laying the basic values and forms. Nothing special right now. So as you can notice, the rough object, the transitions between values are much smoother compared to the other objects that we'll see later. Here we are adding some reflected light, a bit occlusion, and a bit of a terminator. Adding in the drop shadow, uh, a bit ambient occlusion below the shadow, and a highlight, which would probably be a bit more diffuse. Here I copied the sphere over, and I'm just gonna boosting the ambient occlusion to create a more smoother object. Uh, I'm also painting in the ball, the sphere on the other side, so that there is a kind of a reflection in the shadow. I'm just pointing and comparing the two. So right now we're doing a specular object, more metallic. Now we're still laying in basic values. Uh, the difference between this and the smooth object is that because, as we said, this is more like a mirrored surface, it's very good at absorbing light and it almost kind of loses the shadow shape. The, the shadow shape kind of doesn't exist. But we still still do have ambient occlusion on the edges, so you should always keep this in mind. So right now I'm doing a brushed metal ball using uh, the reflected, uh, using the specular ball as a reference. Yeah. Adding a bit of more of a terminator to kind of pronounce how much more of a brushed metal look. It gives a much more of a brush, brushed metal look. Uh, I'm copying the specular ball and I'm going to make a, a glass ball that's reflecting light through itself. And basically works pretty much similar to the, very similar to the specular ball. The only difference is instead of light being uh, reflecting what's in front of it, it's reflecting what's in back of it. And there's going to be some interesting stuff happening with the shadow very soon. I decided to do another version because I was not happy with the previous one. Giving it, I want to give it a bit more of a forward reflections of like the, what's in front of it. I thought it would be kind of cool to combine kind of this more specular and more glass object. Here I'm just kind of pointing towards how light goes through ball. And here on the shadow shape, we're getting all the light that's going through the ball is actually hitting the drop shadow of the ball, giving it kind of a light highlight. So here are our materials that we painted. Now, I didn't go too into detail how to paint these, uh, and I didn't really put as much effort into these as I could have, but it's really not the point of this video, is to give you perfectly rendered. It's just to make you think about how these kind of materials look like. So we have a rough or smooth or specular, which is kind of like a mirror, a rough, uh, rough specular, which is more like a metal, and our glass, which is the see-through material, right? So, in my opinion, really, if you just kind of understand these two, if you just understand the rough and smooth objects, because basically everything in real life is either rough or smooth, basically. Now, some things might be a bit more specular, but for the most part, if you get these two right, basically everything is going to be fine. Yes, you might need to make metals and you might need to make glass but for the most part just these two are the most important ones if you can master these two you can kind of do basically everything and keep in mind that all smooth objects are typically a bit specular just just by the nature of being smooth they get specular they're not going to be specular as glass balls they're not going to reflect their environment one to one maybe they're not going to reflect as much of the environment as a rough rough metal ball but they're definitely going to you know, reflect some of the environment, especially in the shadow areas. And this is really the rule for this. Uh, smooth objects reflect most of the environment in the shadow areas. The light areas are relatively clean, that is. Glass is interesting, and you can definitely play around with it. It gets a lot, a lot of fun, if you can kind of understand it. But that's basically it. Hopefully this helps.